Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to rank in the Google three pack. If you're new to local SEO, this is a perfect video for you. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step what you need to do to rank in the Google three pack. I removed all the ads. This is an ad free lesson. So uh, just sit back, relax, take some notes. If you have any questions, I put my cell number, feel free, text me anytime. And it's just going to be a great lesson. So if you're interested in ranking in the Google three pack, watch this. This video is dedicated to my friend Darren Marion from Retail SEO, who passed away 138 days ago. Darren, I miss you, brother. I can't tell you how much I miss you. I dedicate this video to you. I love you, brother. Let's get started with how to set up your GMB properly. So in the first section, I'm going to show you how to set your GMB, which is Google My Business up correctly. Uh, I am not gonna show you how to set it up. I'm going to show you how to set it up correctly once it's already set up. There are many videos on how to get started with GMB. I'm trying to keep this video you know, under 40 minutes or so. It's probably going to go longer, but uh, I'll put a link for a video that uh, below that teaches how to uh, set up your GMB. So if you haven't already done that, you'll just go to google.com slash business and you'll set it up. I'll put a link below and it'll show you how to do it. So let's assume everybody has their Google My Business set up already and I'll go to a link. Okay, so this is a Google My Business and this is the info portion. You'll notice that I have uh, five services that this lawyer uh, performs. I picked those services based on what the competition is ranking and I'll go over that in a later portion of the video. But most people just have one or some people go crazy and put 20. As you start putting more uh, services that you offer, the more watered down it gets. So I would try to keep it somewhere between three and five. That's just my opinion. People have other opinions on it, but I would keep it between three and five. Then you want to put your service areas. Now this is something interesting. Some people just put, for example, if you're doing business in Orlando, they just put Orlando. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go to the map and type in your city. I'm using uh, explore uh, because I have my clients information already logged in there so if you look at Orlando right that's one area but you'll also notice there's Pine Hills Lockhart Forest City Almonte Springs Longwood Oviedo uh, Azale Azalea Park so what I try to do is I try to add in several areas and put them in the service area don't just put one area. Look at the map around you and put in those service areas. We're going to go over location pages later on. So yes, the answer is yes. You need to create a location page for each one of these areas. Because you're saying in Google, this is what you do. Uh, this is who you service. You need to have a page on your website that talks about that area and what you do in that area. Well, that's how I do it. If you do it different, that's fine, but that's how I do it. The hours are real important, and this is something that everyone makes a mistake on. So if you're open Monday through, I'm sorry, Sunday through Saturday, 24 hours a day, this is exactly how you have to put your hours on your website. Exactly like this. Exactly like this. So I would put it in my footer, and I would also definitely put it on my contact page. But put your hours on your website exactly as you have it like that. If you have special hours, add them. If you don't, that's okay. You add your phone number. You put in your website address and you put in your contact page for your appointment URL. For this client, I didn't put in services because they want to say, for example, uh, how much do you charge for DUI? And the client doesn't want to put that type of stuff on there. So I don't have it edited. If you have wheelchair accessible, if your office is wheelchair accessible, 
add that. If your amenities, you have a restroom, you have a unisex restroom, add that. If somebody was a veteran, add that. If you're LGBTQ friendly, add that. Everybody, just about everybody is, right? So, so add that. Google wants to see that. Then you want to write, I don't know, I guess about uh, 500 words, whatever this is. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. And sprinkle in your keywords and sprinkle in what you do. Starting off with your first keyword. So for this client, it's criminal defense attorney, right? So you should start off with that word in some areas that you, that you service. Almost nobody does that. The other thing is photos. Use your cell phone because your cell phone has a geolocator on, the, on that. So every picture that you take, it says where you took the picture. You'll notice that, for example, when you upload pictures to Instagram, it'll read that off the picture and say that you're in Pinellas Park or you're in New York City during the time of taking the picture. It reads the coordinates off the picture. So go to that location and take as many pictures as you can. And, you know, some people just take 35 pictures. I tell my clients to take as many as possible. Take different angles, take the front of the building, take the rear of the building, take a lot of pictures of people working, even if it's the same picture at different angles of one person working. Take as many pictures as possible because that's what Google wants to see. The other thing, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to uh, photos right here, is the 360 view. You'll notice that we have a 360 view here. What you need to do is you need to go to the app store on your phone, whether you have an Android or you have an Apple phone, and you, know, you need to go to an app called Street View. And it's a free app. You just download it on your phone and you're able to do a 360 tour on your cell phone and upload it to GMB. That's real important. Google wants to see that. Now, there are Google My Business photographers and I'll put the link below. And if you want to use a Google uh, approved photographer, they'll come into your business and they will... Uh, take pictures. They'll do a 360 view inside and outside your building, and the cost is probably about five or six hundred dollars. I'll put the uh, I'll put the link below where you could find somebody to come in from Google. They're authorized uh, photographers to do that. Now, from what I understand and what has been told to me by somebody pretty high in the industry, is that these people have a control panel, and they tick off that that's a real business. So nobody's using a Regis address or using a virtual uh, address, that this is a real business. So if you have a real business, you may want to spend the extra money, I'll put the link below, and find a Google-approved photographer. You hire them, they come in, they take their 360 camera, they do a couple of uh, 360 tours, you upload it to Google My Business, and then they go back, and for what I understand, is that they have a control panel where they could tick off to Google that this is a real business. So they check it off that this is a real business and it's going to help boost your ranking. So that's a, uh, that's a good pro tip. If you didn't know that, if you don't feel like spending the extra couple of hundred dollars, you could do it yourself. Like I told you, the two biggest ranking factors are people clicking your link and people leaving your reviews. Google wants to satisfy the search. But all these little things help, all these little 1% help. A big ranking factor that Google uses is something called geo-relevance. So, for example, if you're doing a search from Orlando, Florida, Disney, or you're doing it from a little far north, Lockhart, Florida, or Tampa, Florida, you're going to get different locations because what Google wants to do is Google wants to give you the best results for your search. We had said that probably two or three times already before. If you're in Orlando, Florida, or if you're in uh, Tampa, you're not going to be able to see as well 
as somebody who is in a different state. So for example, if you're in Tampa and you're doing a search, uh, Orlando criminal defense lawyer, you're going to get, you, you're going to use some geo relevance because you said uh, Orlando, but you're not going to get the exact result. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to download a plugin. Plugins right here. It's called uh, GS Location Changer. And it's a Chrome extension. It's called GS Location Changer. And all you have to do is download that extension and it'll show up in your top of your toolbar. And when you're doing a search, you could put in Orlando, Florida. You could put in Tampa. I keep saying Tampa. I don't know why I keep doing that. I don't know. I keep saying Tampa. Anyway, you just put in Tampa. And when you do your search, even if you're not in Tampa, if you're in New York City at the time, you could see who's ranking in the three pack and what the, and what the search results are for that city. Right? That people should be excited. If you, have, if you don't already know this, you should pretty, be pretty excited about that because you're not getting the results unless you change your, your geolocation. All right? So whatever city you're searching from or you want to see the results from, you just download this, this uh, GS location changer. And then you put in the city. You just go outside here. And now I'm searching from uh, Tampa. And if I change it from here, I'm, change, I'm going from uh, Orlando, right? You can put Orlando or wherever you want. You put wherever you want. I don't, I don't care where you put, whatever. What, what do I give a shit? Just go put it, and, uh, and that's where you could do your search. So if you're doing work for a client and you want to see if he's ranking in that city or you want to see what the rankings are in that city, criminal defense lawyer, and you put in Lockhart or you put Ola Vista or you put in... Uh, Oviedo or whatever city you're in, you want to see the nearby towns and see if they're ranking in that town also, uh, you just change the location in the, in the, in the um, GS location changer, right? So it's a Chrome extension, real easy to use, just download it, and you should be using this tool all the time. Everybody on stand, raise, raise your hand. When picking a keyword for your business, so for example, in this example I used criminal defense lawyer, Right, and I have my GS locator on um, on Orlando right now. So these are the these are the lawyers coming up right now for Orlando. So when picking a keyword, you want some easy wins for the beginning. Does that make sense? In the beginning, you want easy wins. So you want to try to pick a city, and you want to try to pick a keyword that does not have a lot of competition. So, for example, if, uh, if you're a lawyer in Orlando and you said to me, hey, Brett, I want to rank for a criminal defense lawyer in Orlando, let me just show you what I would do. And I'm using criminal defense lawyer as just an example. It could be electrician in Brooklyn, New York, let's just say. It could be, it could be anything. I'm just using criminal defense lawyer. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in criminal defense lawyer. I'm going to use the GS locator. I'm going to see what the competition is. And I'm going to look at more places. And I want to see how many lawyers are trying to rank for that keyword. So I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to see 10. So there's over 100 lawyers, more than 100 lawyers trying to rank for that keyword. So right there, I'm probably going to say, well, that's, you know, for, especially for a brand new domain name, that's going to be kind of tough. And especially if you're not ranking or if you're ranking, like, for example, on the eighth page, that's going to be quite, that's going to be uh, quite a lot of work. Not impossible, but, but it's going to be a work. You can't do it in, in, in a week or two. And that's our goal here, right? We want to try to rank in a week, uh, a week or two. So, for example, I go over to, what I'll do is I'll go over to Orlando Maps and I'll look at Orlando and I'll try to grab another city close to Orlando. And in my example, I'll take a look at Orlando. I'll take a look at Orlando and I'll, I'll go to this website. It's called niche.com. All right, I'll put that in the description box below just in case you forget, or you can write it down now, niche.com. And what niche.com does is it gives me the population. I'm looking in the beginning for something around 75,000 to maybe 150, 200,000 population in the beginning. If I could find a city that has a population between 75 
and 150 to 200,000 and something that maybe just has four pages of results, right? If we go back here and we scroll all the way down, it's not one through 10, there's only about four. I know that I could break, break into that in two weeks. I know I could break out into that in two weeks if I do everything just about right. If I do everything right in Orlando, well, the population is, you know, over 250,000 and there's 10, there's over 10 listings. It, it's going to be harder. It's, I can't do it in two weeks. So I'm going to look on the map, right? I'm going to look on the map. I'm going to look for another city and I found Kissimmee and I go to niche.com and I look at Kiss Kissimmee and 68,000. All right, you know what? That's a good population. Let me see what's going on here. Let me see what the real estate value is, the rent value. Let me see um, crime. Let me, let me find out a little bit about the area. And especially if you're doing a lawyer, I may say, hey, well, you know, theft. And uh, theft seems like to be a big thing. So I'll start looking for theft at Walmart and Target. And that's probably where a lot of, some, you know, a lot of the theft is coming from. And I'll build some pages like that. But that's an, you know, you, you just want to get little clues from these type of websites. So you go to, you know, go, you know, go to niche.com and it tells you a little bit about the medium income and, and that type of stuff. So, okay. So I have, for example, a lawyer who's in Orlando and I say, okay, look, um, John, whatever, you, you know, John or Sue, whatever your name is, say Sue. So what I want to do is I want to rank you first in, in Kissing Me. It's just... Uh, it's just not too far from Orlando. See, there's Walt Disney World and there's Kissing Me. It's not too far. And I believe I could get you ranked there. So I'll create some location pages and I'll build a bunch of links. And we'll talk about that later on, how to, uh, how to rank there. But that's the city that I'm going to target. That's why I target that one first. And, and once I have that built, then I'll start going after Orlando, a bigger city that has a bigger population. But... In the beginning, my clients want results, you know, and if you just go, okay, yeah, I could rank you, and I could rank you in Orlando, and then the client, you know, is paying, you know, X amount, whatever that X is, they're paying, and 30 days, they don't see any results, and they're not in a three-pack, and 60 days, they're not in a three-pack, and 90 days, they're not in a three-pack, you know, it's not going to be too long before they're not paying you anymore. And, 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 and they're not, if they're not making money, then you're not making money. So what you want to do is you want to just create some quick wins. You want to get some quick wins. Don't go after the big city with a half million or a million people population and over 10 in the search results in the, in the, um, uh, I'm sorry, right here, right, right here, right? You want it to be around three, four, maybe five. I'll kill that. I'll kill that. I'll kill that every time. So I start to look around for different cities, Callahan, and I, I don't know anything about Westfield, but I look for cities all around Orlando, and I try to, um, and I try to rank for, the, for my clients in, in smaller cities first, and then I start bringing them over to the bigger cities. So everybody wins, right? Everybody wins. That's what we want to do. In this section, I'm going to show you how to get the best citations for your business. So for example, lawyers will have uh, certain directories and citations they should be in, doctors should be in another, plumbers should be in another. But before, before we go any further, let's kind of explain what citations are. Citations are directory listings that have your name, address, and phone number, otherwise known as NAP, NAP, N-A-P, name, address, and phone number. What Google does is it does, for example, a roundup. When it wants to check your address, it goes to websites like Yelp, Brown Book, Local.com, Yahoo, Insider Pages, Hot Frog. And when all the addresses are exactly the same, 1010 Main Street, for example, and uh, suite number 304, for example, when they're all exactly the same, Google is able to confirm that that's your address. So if you've moved over the past couple of years and you've changed the address on your website, and uh, sometimes these, these um, citations, these directory listings, 
uh, get built when you fill out certain information or your customers fill out certain information and your old address is there, you'll never be able to be found in Google with the wrong, in the uh, three pack with the wrong information or it'll be very hard. Uh, there's always an exception to the rule. However, your address needs to be exactly the same on your Google My Business, on your website, and in these citations. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the best citations and how to check your citations. What you want to do first is you want to check your citations. So what you'll do is you'll put your business name in moz.com slash local slash search. I'll put that in the, uh, in the description below. So you just have to click it or you could write it down right now. Moz.com slash local slash search. And you'll put your business name in, you'll put your zip code, and you'll check your listing and it'll show you all the errors that you have. Another one that you could check and it may be slightly different, is a place called yext.com. So you put in your country, you put in your business type, your business name, your phone number, you scan now, and it'll show you all the listings that are correct and the ones that are wrong. So you come up with this and you're like, okay, I gotta, I gotta change all my citations. This citation is now turned into a business. So for example, yext charges like $1,000 a year. They date, uh, correct all your citations. They, they, if you have duplicate listings, they're able to fix them. They're able to also get into uh, Yahoo and they're able to do Yahoo local. So it's very hard, if not impossible, to get into that directory. Uh, Yext has a partnership with them. So it's real easy for them to, um, to, to work with those companies. So the good thing about working with Yext is you, you have your old control, you have your own control panel. You upload all your pictures that you have in your GMB. You put them on Yext, and it goes out to Yelp, it goes out to Yahoo, it goes out to uh, uh, Bing. Uh, you know, it goes out to all these aggregates, and uh, you just you don't have to go to each one. The thing is, it's a thousand dollars a year, and if uh, next year you decide you're like, hey, that's all right, I'm not going to pay them, forget it. All your citations go down. So, you know, you, you're kind of stuck with them at $1,000 a year. But you know what? It may be worth it. You know, it may be worth it. But Yext isn't the only answer. If you decide to use Yext and buy your citations through Yext, they only have about, I don't know off the top of my head, let's just say 75 citations. There are hundreds upon hundreds of citations. And one of the factors that Google looks at is your competition may have 230 citations, so you should try to get 250 citations. And if Yext is only giving you 75, you wanna get citations from some other place. Make sense so far, right? So you need citations. Citations, let Google know what your name, address, and phone number is. It checks it throughout the web, and when it all comes back with the same information, Google is confident that that is your name, address, and phone number, and they could send you know, uh, their clients to you because they're confident that you're at 1010 Main Street. I made that address up. So what you want to do next is you want to go to moz.com slash local slash categories. And I'll put that in the uh, box below, in the description box below, uh, the link, or you could write it down right now. So keeping with the theme of lawyer, and like I said, it could be electrician, but just to stay steady. Um, Moz gives you a bunch of citations, the best citations for each category. So we're using lawyer right now. I just had it. Oh, give me a second. Okay. We're using lawyer right now. So what we do is we click lawyer. And these are the best citations that we should be we should be in best of the web factual foursquare info group uh local ease and thompson local all these all these uh citations we should do now you could do them by hand you could go to each website and you could go for example to axiom and you could fill out all the information or 
I have nothing to do with this girl. Do not, um, you don't have to say that I referred you. In fact, don't say I referred you because she doesn't even know who I am, but I use her all the time. I go to a website called Fiverr and I use F-I-V-E-R-R and I use a girl called Virtual Girl 2010. Now be careful because this, this girl is popular, this, this, this company is popular and uh, there's a lot of virtual girls out there and it's virtual girl something else spelled a little bit different make sure it's virtual girl 2010 and purchase the citation package from her it's right here purchase the citation package from her and she'll do hundreds of citations for you you could tell her these are the ones that you want and then the ones that Yek suggests and, and, and Moz suggests, you could make a whole list in an Excel spreadsheet and you could send them over to her and she'll, she'll get most of them done. Some of them require phone verification and different things. So some of them are a little harder. You may have to do those. You know, you may have to come back to the ones that she can't do and do them by hand. But you know what? Uh, she does a bunch of citations. She gives you the username and password for every directory listing that she does for you. You send her over your name, address, phone number, a couple of pictures, and a little description task, uh, text, and her company or her, whoever it is, um, does it at a very reasonable rate. The next thing that you want to do is you want to set up maps. So for example, you want to set up your Apple map, right? So I go over to, once again, I go over to Fiverr, I type in map listings, and I try to look through, sort through, and here's somebody who create your local uh, map listing. And then there's somebody on the bottom that will create a uh, Bing listing, B-I-N-G, Bing listings, right here. And then you have MapQuest and Maps.com. So you want to try to get all your maps listings because that's also another signal to Google uh, where you're located, right? So you could find somebody on Fiverr that does map listings, or you could just uh, go to Google and type in uh, uh, maps and do them yourself. You could see all the maps that come up and you could just do them yourself. But it's real important to, uh, to do all the maps listings, everyone that you could possibly think of. The next thing that you want to do, and I use this service once in a while, not this particular person, but, um, you want to set up all your social media profiles. And once again, they need to have the right address also. Your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, Pinterest, and so on and so forth. And that could take a lot of time. So I would just find a Fiverr gig. Just top it, type in social profiles and you'll get somebody to do 300 of them. You give them the name, address, phone number, some pictures, and they'll set them all up. Um, just pick somebody. I don't, I don't have anybody in particular. I always use somebody different or I have my staff use somebody different. But So those are the three things. You want your citations, you want your maps, and you want your social profiles all to have the same name, address, and phone number as on your website. I could honestly give a two-hour lesson on Google Maps and how to set up Google Maps and there are many many theories I'm just going to try to give a very simple lesson and something that will cover your needs right now one of the things when trying to rank in Google Maps is you need to make sure that you have a map and I'm going to show you how to do it so the first thing you should do is just sign into your Google account right so once you're signed in you'll see a little picture you'll see a picture right there and an easy way to get to it is just to go to Google and type in my maps you'll see the first link here which is Google my maps and since you're already logged in you'll come right to this page the first thing you want to do is create a new map so you click that, you should probably click that a little, I'm pounding the keys. Before you do anything, see where it says share? And we'll get to this in a second. Just hit okay, don't worry about that. Take off private access. 
The reason why I say to do this first is because some people create these elaborate maps and forget to take it off private. So they spend an hour creating their map and then forget the last part, which is to change it from um, shared with specific people, and you need to change it to public and click OK. That's just the first thing you do, just click done, and that's it. Okay, so the next steps are pretty easy. What you want to do is in this search box, you want to find your business. So I'm going to make up a business. For example, you would put in your business name here and see where it, found, see where it shows up. I'll just pick, for example, Johnson Law Group. I don't know who they are. I'm sure they're doing great. And I'll just click that. Okay, so you'll see the map, you'll see the pin. What you want to do next is you want to just change the map title to Johnson exactly as it is in the, uh, in the maps listing. It says Johnson Law Group. Now, for brevity, what I did was, I think the most frustrating thing in the world is having watching somebody type for 15 minutes. So I just opened up Notepad, but let me show you where I got this from. What I did was all this information is taken from Google My Business. I made this up. I used Google My Business as an example, but I made up the address and uh, made everything up. So I would go into Google My Business and I would take the exact address and I would add it to the description, right? I would make sure that the address here and the address here match. They don't because I just did it for an example, all right? So these two addresses in the maps and in my description should match. They will They're from the GMB. The next thing that I wanna do is I want to add the hours. Now, you'll notice that the hours are taken exactly from the GMB, exactly how they're written, meaning that they have the space, they have the, ca the capital O, they have the space. It says 24 hours. It doesn't say 24 HRS. It is exactly as it is in the Google My Business, right? So I'll add that. The next thing I want to do is add the service areas. So we spoke about that when creating the Google My Business is adding service areas. Once again, you could add service area, you add your service areas right here. Okay, that's where you service. And then you want to add your description. So what I did was I took the Google My Business and I just massaged it a little bit. I, it's not exact match, but it's similar. But I just made some changes to it. And what I tried to do was add their keywords, their categories, and where they service. And I tried to put together a little, you know, I just tried to change it around a little bit and, and just make it a little bit different. I don't think it's a big deal in regards to duplicate content. And I added that. Okay. Then what I'll do is visit us at Johnson Law. Right, Johnson Law. HTTPS, you know, you know what I mean. Okay, so now we're getting part to the easier parts, all right? Th those hard parts are over, and we're getting to the easier parts. You will notice that there is a pin here, and that is where the client is located. So you're going to need to look at your pin and make sure that your pin is located exactly where it should be. That's what your that's where your address is. So for example, there between Boyer Miller and Slowpokes, they have a place that's in between there, right? So the way you move it is you just left click and then you just move it with the mouse and you could drag it. Okay? But it should be pretty much set. Google 
has that address pretty much set. All right, very easy. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click the pin, left click the pin, and we're going to have the uh, directions and, and the name. Now, let's go over these small little icons. First of all, you could click the paint one and you could change the color of the icon. I personally don't care. You could also change the icon to a star instead of uh, you know a map pin, whatever you want to do. That's really not that important. It doesn't matter. Then you could click edit and you could edit some information. Once again, you could just leave that alone. The edits are right. The pictures, however, are important. And in the pictures, what you want to do is go to your photos and you want to select some pictures. Select several pictures that would best represent your business. Hopefully, you have them saved already on Google Drive and add those pictures. The other thing is if they have a YouTube video, is to add is to add the YouTube video. If they don't have a YouTube video, you could do a YouTube search and you could find not a competitor, but maybe the city or the government put out a video that closely resembles what you're trying to do or talks about it, or maybe even talks about the city. If not, you could go to Fiverr and you could have a video made for uh, $25, let's just say, and uh, you could give them a little script and they'll talk about the keyword that you're trying to rank for and the city and so on and so forth. You get the idea. I'm not going to go over because this is very self-explanatory. So what you want to do next is you want to set up driving directions. Very, very simple. So what you do is you just, first of all, you take your map and just zoom it out a little bit. And what you're going to try to do is just try to find some points of interest. Now, I don't know anything about Houston. I'm sure it's a lovely town. Um, but let's just say that the Houston Chronicle corporate office right here was a point of interest. This would be west, so I try to get a location, a west location. And what I do is I just, uh, driving from uh, John... Uh, driving from Houston Chronicle Corporation office to, to um, Johnson Law Group, right? So I add that in there. I click Save, and then I would click it again, and I try to find a point that was north, a driving direction that was north. And then I would click Save, and then I would do it again, and I try to find a place that was east. So, for example, the Consulate, of, Consulate General of Mexico. That would be a place that I would maybe, you know, that's a, um, a point of interest to come to uh, Johnson Law Group. And then I would get one south, another point of interest, whether it be an historical building or a bridge or something like that. So just get four directions and just name the layers, just name the layers, just name it, you know, from Houston Chronicle. From Houston Chronicle, that's that's how you, those are the driving directions from Houston Chronicle. Then this one is from the Consulate uh, General of Mexico, and that's how you do driving directions. But make sure you have four from each, each direction. Simple enough, right? Okay, are you ready for sexy time? You ready to get sexy here? All right, I'm sure you are. Watch this. This is the part that you're going to love. So you already completed your map. And all the elements are filled in. You have your pictures, your video, you have your description, your hours, your address, your website, and so on and so forth. Everything's complete. You go to this, these three dots right here, and you go to embed on site. Just right click this, copy the code, okay? You have the code. And what you want to do is take that embed code and you want to put it on your contact page because that's the map that you created. So you want to put that map on your website. Is that clear? 
Good. Then what you want to do is you want to power up that map. Because since the map is on your website, now you want to make that map stronger. So let's just say that map has a ranking of zero. We want to bring that up. How could we do that? How could we make that map stronger so it really shows Google that that's our address so we could get ranked in the three pack? Here's what you want to do. Go over to Fiverr and just type in map embeds and find, I don't use anybody uh, specific here once again, but what I like to do is I like to find someone for example, that's a level one seller. So I'll go to a level one seller and I will find, usually I'm pretty lazy, I'll find somebody up on top or I'll find somebody who has the most rankings and uh, all right, this guy, well, whatever, this guy, 51, right? And, oh, those are web 2.0s. Okay, yeah, so you could use web 2.0s, you could use map embeds. And, okay, so I'm glad this came up. So what you want to do is send that code that you just copied and you want that map to be embedded in web 2.0s like they'll put them on tumblers, they'll put them on bloggers and that will power up your map which in turn in turn will power up your address and your location on your website. Does that make sense? Okay. That's a great way of uh, increasing your rankings on, uh, for your three-pack. Very, very simple. is just get the code, put it on your website, take the same code that you copied, and send it over to Fiverr and have them uh, embed it on Web 2.0s. Now I'm going to show you how to get great reviews. So what you want to do is you want to go to this website called whitespark.ca. And once you go there, just hit tools up on top and then Google review link generator. Real simple. Put in your business name. So we said before, I think it was John, Johnson Law Group, something like that, right? Johnson Law. All right. Okay, here we go. Johnson Law Group. And then this is my link. So what I will do is I will take that link, I will email it to myself, then I will open it up on my mobile phone, on my Android. I copy the link, so I have the link in my text. And I text over a couple of customers who've used my service and I will say, hey, would you mind giving me a five-star review if you liked my service, right? If you like my service, give me a five-star review. And this is what they'll see. When they open up the phone or they open up or, or if you send them an email, they will see this, right? So to click five stars because if you ask somebody to give you a review on Google, most people, some people won't know how to do it or will forget. So all they need to do is click the link in their text. And as long as they're signed into Google, it'll ask them to sign into their Google account. They sign in, they leave a five star review. Here's the thing. Let's say you're a lawyer in Orlando, Florida, and you're a criminal defense lawyer. You can't tell your clients what to say. But I have a great client, one of my one of my best clients, and they reviewed me on Google. And I said, yeah, if you don't mind, just give me a review on Google. Yeah, great. They give me a five-star review and uh, they say, um, great service. I really love working with them. Well, what does that mean? Am I, you know, am I a plumber or electrician? Like they didn't, they didn't mention anything. So what I mean by that is you should let the, the, your client know Hey, would you mind saying something like, uh, if you feel comfortable naturally, I was looking for an, a lawyer in Orlando, Florida, because I needed a, I needed a criminal defense lawyer in Orlando, Florida, right? So they're saying the keywords criminal defense lawyer and where it's located in, in, in um, Orlando, Florida. 
And I worked with Johnson Law, and they were great, and they got me out of the case, or they helped me with my case, whatever the situation is. And um, so that's what you want to do. Now, I want you to understand something is that when you send this link over to people, most people, unless they're upset, never review. They don't review anything. So it's most of your reviewers are only going to have one or two reviews. And Google only sees that as like, look, maybe you baited these people, maybe you helped these people. If you have 151 reviews and all of them, the only, the only one they reviewed is your place. It doesn't look very good. So there's something called local guides. I happen to be a local guide. It's somebody that does a lot of reviews. So if I go somewhere, I just click a review and I say, hey, I really like this place. The food was great. And you know, I add the keywords in and nobody has to ask me to do it. I just do it. And I've become a local guide. And you may say, well, how do I get, how do I find local guides? Well, if you have a Facebook account, just go to Google local guides and you could join these groups. You see there's 11,000 members in these groups and see if you could get in one of these groups and all these people are local guides. And maybe some of these people um, are your clients, wink, wink, right? And they reviewed your business. And um, so, so local guides, their, their influence is stronger than somebody who just did one. So did one review. So you take that link, you send it over to the local guide, they send you a review and uh, just don't go crazy with it. You know, don't go from having no reviews to getting 200 reviews in one week. It, it doesn't make sense. You know, you've been in business for seven years. Now, all of a sudden you got 200 reviews. Try to get somewhere between five and 10 reviews a week. That's great. And if you get five, that's excellent. You get three. That's really good. You know, that's fine. But don't don't go crazy with, re with your reviews, especially if you haven't gotten reviews in a long time. So get that link from WhiteSpark, send it over to your customers, text them, email them. They'll just click the link. They'll leave the five-star review. If you need some uh, local guides, join a Facebook group. There's other ways to do it. You can research how to get uh, local Google local guides. I'm just letting you know that there's such a thing. And they're weighted heavier. Their review is weighted heavier than somebody who's just reviewed one or two things right? Okay, so we're learning things here today, right? Even little reviews, how to get reviews, and what's stronger, one review or a local guide. I told you to be some juicy stuff here. Right. So you want to start by creating an address page. You want to create an, a, a page with your client's name or your name with your address on it and in this on this page you want to put the client's name address and phone number you want to put it in the h1 tag you could go over the fiverr and get a video and just have somebody saying hey if you're looking for a criminal defense lawyer please check out whatever the client's name located at blank and just a short just a short video whatever the speech is in the video that you give them you could use that as the text in the uh, description below right these um, we added a map on the right hand side we added the reviews which are embedded from their Google reviews we added the categories that they're in GMB for, and you'll notice we added the hours exactly as it is in the GMB. When you talk about some of the services that we provide, all right, those are all the keywords that we want to be ranked for. Once again, our law firm, Orlando, Florida Services, we added we added the services that we wanted to be found for. We put off Facebook, LinkedIn, and Yelp. And then we added a, uh, a city link. Now this city link goes to the city of Orlando, right? Now, 
One of the other things to give geo relevancy is that we added nearby places, hotels, restaurants, and bars and pubs. That is important to Google because when Google shows your listing on the map, it shows hotels, restaurants, and bars. So we find the closest hotels, restaurants, and bars, and we add several links that surround our business. And we put it on the right-hand side. We let know what credit cards. And, okay, so this is an address page. It's part of the location pages, and it's the first page that you should build. Is that clear? All right. So next, what you want to do is you want to start building out your location pages or areas we serve, right? We had spoke about in the Google My Business, all the areas that we serve. And what you're going to do is you're just going to build out pages like this. So for example, about our Orlando law firm, you talk about how your client services or how you service that area. You'll create a YouTube video and you'll call it Orlando Law Firm, right? Orlando, Florida Law Firm. You'll talk about the services you provide, right? Services with law firm, Orlando, Florida services. You'll add some uh, review sites and then you'll add a link back to um, you know, a prominent city page. So Google relates this page with Orlando, Florida, whatever city you're, you, uh, you're from. Your uh, map, if you already put it in the, if you already put it in the footer, will be on the page. So you don't need to redo it. You can though. It's a very simple page. It's just letting Google know that you service that area. You don't have to go crazy with it. So what I would suggest is just set up for every area something very similar, very similar to this. Set up all your city pages. Set up all your city pages, okay? All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, you're hanging in there. I hope all this information is helpful. I'm trying to keep it as short as possible, okay? So this page, what we're looking at right now is the category, the GMB category. So for example, if you're, the example that I gave before was one of the, one of the GMB categories was law firm, right? So we set up a law firm, Orlando FL. We put in the client's uh, name, address, phone number, and also a Gmail account. We wrote a little something about it and then we also linked the other GMB category pages to this page, to the law page. And the law page links to personal injury and criminal justice. We put a video for a law firm, kept it real simple, and we added a picture. And you may ask, why did we add that picture? There's a specific reason why we added that specific picture as well as this specific picture. So just as a little tip, if you go to uh, Google and you type in uh, law firm in your area, whatever that area is, take a look at the images that Google sees as prominent for that keyword. And for this keyword, at the time, that's what Google saw as prominent, so that's why we added those type of pictures. Right? Makes sense? All right, good. All right, so that's how you set up Google My Business category pages. So for every category that you picked in Google My Business, you need to create a page for that. When you're looking to rank for a specific keyword, you need to create a page just built around that keyword. And that may seem very simple at first until you have to write the content or until you have to hire somebody to write the content. And if you don't give proper instruction, you're not going to get the proper content written for your website, whether you write it or you have a professional writer write it. If they don't know how to write for the search engines, 
which is really writing for people, you're not going to rank that content. So, for example, if you're trying to rank for the keyword DUI lawyers, what you want to do is you want to do some research first. So you go to Google and you type in DUI lawyers, right? You type in DUI lawyers and you start clicking some websites to see how much content do they have on their website? For example, uh, 500 words, 1,000 words, so on and so forth. Once you get a general idea, you want to write a little bit more content than they have. One of the tools that I use is something called Ahrefs. And what I do is I put in DUI lawyers, I hit Keyword Explorer, and I start to write down some of these terms right that would affect me DUI lawyers DUI lawyers near me not Dallas or Miami or Atlanta and then I start writing down some of the questions how much does a DUI lawyer cost how much do DUI lawyers charge basically the same thing I would just write cost and I would go and ask some of these questions then what I would do is I would scroll all the way down to Google and it says related searches and I try to take some of the keywords here and I would write them down. Make sense so far? All right. You can go over to another website called answerthepublic.com and you put in your keyword car accident lawyer, DUI lawyer. And you could get the questions that people are asking. These are the questions that people are asking. Uh, car accident, you know, how to get a how to get a car accident lawyer in Orlando, uh, you know, near me, or so on and so forth. You could just use this. You could use this website also. You could also use a website called Cora, and you type in the keyword, and you'll see the questions that people are asking. Remember what I said in the beginning. Google wants to give its users the best result for their search. So if you're writing everything about that keyword, you have a better chance of ranking higher than your competition and if you're giving them more information. Another website I use, it's a bit quirky, is Uber Suggest. And sometimes it takes a long time to load, but they have keyword ideas and content ideas. And uh, if you don't do it in the middle of the day, I've found, Sometimes you could get, you could use this for free and you could get the same information. So what I'm basically saying is that you use the tools that I, that I just presented and you answer the questions. What is a DUI lawyer? DUI lawyer, why you need one, right? Bottom line, I put in a video. More about DUI lawyer. This is like the related searches on the bottom, best DUI lawyers, cheap DUI lawyers in Florida, so on and so forth. And I write a little page, 500, 500 words on each page. Okay, so what we're trying to say here is how do you get content for your website? How do you know where to start? Well, you get your keyword then you check out one of the tools and you need to answer, you know, five, six, seven questions. What are clients looking for? And you need to answer those questions. And if you could best answer those questions and your website is trusted by Google, you're going to rank for that keyword. So one of the most important tricks or hacks that you could use to get your client's sites or your site ranked in the Google three pack would be to have users do a search, for example, DUI lawyers in your area, whatever area you live in, or whatever keyword you're looking for, uh, hot water heaters in Los Angeles, or Huntington Beach, or, you know. So once you find the three pack, and if you're located in a three pack, but let's just say you're not, Let's say you're somewhere over here. You are, uh, 
let's say you're Ali and Blanker. Blank, Blanker, right? Okay. So here's what you do. Let's just say that's your site. You click the name of your site. You grab this link, which is up top here. That's a direct link for DUI lawyers. It's, it's coming out of uh, Florida, where I'm at. You right-click, and you copy that link. Now you want to create a short link out of it, so you just sign up with a real quick account with Bitly. Okay, it's uh, B-I-T-L-Y, and you paste the link in there. You create the link, right? Now you copy the link, you save it, perfect. Okay, now you take that link, this short link, right here, you take this short link, and now that's your job, is to have people in your area just click that link. You could send them an email, you could send them a text, but you want, now here's the point, you want a lot of people to click that link. They don't have to do anything, just click that link. What it's going to do, it's going to show Google that the person searched for that and clicked it. I would put it on my social media and see if people could click it there. Or um, create a video and at the end of the video have people click it. You know, if you could, if you could get that video on, a, um, on some type of city page, let's just say, right? You want local people in that area to click the link. So I'm just trying to give a couple of ideas on how you could do it. I have other ways to do it, but you know, I'm just trying to throw some ideas, some free ideas, ideas out there for you to do it. But that's probably the most important thing that you could do is to do that. Another thing that you want to do is it's real important when you pick the category is if you're looking for DUI lawyers, for example, I keep using that. You want to make sure that you pick the first category and you Google My Business when it's asking for categories, the first one. You want to make sure that you pick the one where everybody else is being listed. So it looks like criminal justice attorney, right? Because when people set up the Google My Business, they just put law firm first or they may put um, a personal injury lawyer. You want to make sure that you're looking, you're looking at what everybody else is ranking for, what they have. So criminal justice attorney, right? Everybody has criminal justice attorney. This one has law firm. So I would use that one second. And so on and so forth. So here's attorney. That's third. So like I said, you want to have like, you know, three to five uh, different categories, right? So that's, that's one of the ways to get, there's another way also, but that's one of the ways to get, to get the categories so you're doing the right categories. Remember, when you select a category for your Google My Business, you need to build a page for that category. So yes, you have your 10 pages on your website, but then you also need to build a page for every category that your website, that you pick in Google My Business. And then you also need to pick a, an address page, a location page, city pages. It's a lot of work. Um, can it be done? Yeah, you could do it. You could do it. Um, I have a team that does it. I have a team that does it. So um, if you're interested and you'd like maybe me, you'd like to sit down with me, you'd like to do a little Skype meeting or a phone meeting, and talk about how to get your website in the Google 3-pack. I'd love to talk to you. Um, I'm going to, put, going to put my email address in the text box below. So feel free to shoot me over an email. And if you have any questions or if you'd like to work together, uh, I usually don't take on too many clients per month because I like to keep in touch and see what's going on with every client. So... I mean, I, I, that's something that we could do, or if you just have some questions and something that wasn't clear on this video, I, I tried to keep it short, and maybe I, I left something out, and you have a question about it, feel free, shoot me over an email. My email address is brettmoletta 
at gmail.com and uh, just let me know what I could do to help you and I'll be happy to I'll be happy to help you out um, I believe that this everything that I showed you here is anywhere from 90 to 95 percent of what you need to rank in the Google three pack and depending on how competitive the market is it should be more than enough to rank you in the Google three pack you know if you're trying to rank for New York City lawyer or Los Angeles lawyer you know, you may have to go to 100%, and there may be some other dirty tricks that you need to do, and, uh, you know, in a more competitive market. But uh, when there's not that much competition, like I said in this video, you're going for 7 to 15 days, you got to rank. Remember what I said. Remember what I said. Don't go after the big cities. Try to find a population between 75 and maybe 150,000. You know, 60,000 is good, too. Go to that niche.com and check the uh, salaries of... Uh, of, of check the population, check the salary, see what's going on in that town, and uh, don't be afraid to make a mistake. You know, uh, you know, you may you may create a city page for a town and you don't get any business from it. You know, not not every not everybody not every swing could be a home run. You know, uh, sometimes things aren't a home run today, and next year they turn into a home run. You you never know, you never know. But don't be afraid to make a mistake. Pick those cities out, and and, and try to rank. You, you should, there should be no reason why you shouldn't rank between seven and, seven and 15 days. You could do it.